It feels like just yesterday that CSS got variables. Apparently they don't plan on stopping at variables though, because I just got word CSS has actual functions coming. Like what? What? Oh boy. <laughs> this is going to be fun. We have a lot to read into here. The future might be CSS on the server. <laughs> we have a long ways to go. Can't wait to go over all of this with you guys. If you want to stay on top of your CSS game and make sure you don't fall behind in the world post Tailwind, make sure you watch. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Nowadays, it kind of feels like you have to be multi-cloud. You need somewhere for your database, somewhere for your servers, and somewhere for your assets that are static and being served to your users faster. You can use a product like Vercel if you're on a JavaScript Next.js stack, but what about everyone else? If you're on PHP, Rails, Go, or pretty much anything else, those tools don't help you. Well, today's sponsor is here to help you out. It's so simple, even I could figure out how to deploy a full stack Laravel app on Google and on Cloudflare. Yes, they'll put the right things in the right places for you. This app's pretty basic, so all we have on Cloudflare, for now at least, is the DDoS protection. But we can very easily add CDN and edge caching, literally just clicking buttons or exporting them from our app. And now whenever I make a change, we can have it set up to auto-deploy. We can even build full pipelines around the different parts of our workflow. So if we want automatic preview builds in our dev environment when we put up a pull request, you're good to go. If you want to keep track of which environments are where and promote them by hand, maybe you set it up every day, maybe you do it after a meeting, maybe you want it to happen automatically. All these types of workflows that are obnoxious to set up, especially when you consider the different platforms you're trying to integrate with, all handled for you. Zavala's goal is to make it as simple as possible to deploy pretty much anything. It's really, really cool to see an option of this quality for way larger portions of the ecosystem. Stop fighting to get your app deployed. Give these guys a shot. They've been a really good experience for me. I bet you'll love them too. Use my link for $50 of free credit. Check them out today at soydev.link slash Savala. Let's dive in. So we've already put CSS in our functions in JS with CSS and JS. You realize that was wrong. We went the other way with Tailwind. Where are we going to end up here now though? Can I write React renderers? C could I write my own DOM in CSS? I this is going to go a lot of places. It's probably just going to be a way to resolve variables, effectively a switch statement. I have no idea what it's going to be though. We're going to learn together. So let's do it. Chrome is prototyping CSS functions. This is an upcoming CSS feature, so we can't use it yet. Apparently it is in the Chrome Canary though, so we might go play with that. Chrome is currently prototyping CSS functions from the CSS Mixins 1 specification. A custom function can be thought of as an advanced custom property, which instead of being substituted by a single fixed value, it computes its substitution value based on function parameters and the value of custom properties at the point that it's invoked. Interesting. So here we have a very simple example. Function dash dash negate takes in a value. Gotta love the dash dash declaration syntax for defining variables. I wonder if this will catch on in other languages. Please don't make JavaScript worse. It's already bad enough. But here we have this function negate. It takes in a value, not typed, because of course not. The result is that it calcs negative one times whatever the value is with the var ripping the value out of what you passed. So if we negate 1px, it multiplies 1px by negative 1, which results in negative 1px. I see where we're going here. I still want TCSS. I want this to be typed. I understand why it's not, but it'd be really nice if it was. But this has a ton of potential. And seeing all the stuff Tailwind v4 did with variables, I have some ideas for where this is going. I feel like light mode, dark mode is the demo that is given for so many new CSS features. But this is one of the places where it really feels like it fits interesting that you could have a light dark function and pass it the two different values one for light mode one for dark mode so you define both at the same time and now whichever the prefers is set on the browser that's the one that will be used instead that's actually really cool the one thing that feels weird is i think of result like return and return should be an early escape and this feels like an early return here I would have preferred if it's like the first resolution is what's hit, but it's the order of events is what actually happens. So results ver light, but if this is true, result gets overridden as ver dark. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that HTML's order of events, CSS's order of events, and JS's order of events are all as different as they are. The fact that I have to resolve that conflict in my head, switching between three different files in the same code base is annoying. I get that this is just how CSS works, but one of the three letters in CSS was a mistake. So I don't necessarily think the way CSS works is always the right way to go as we improve the language. 
because cascading in and of itself is a fundamental failure of design. <laughs> we should be willing to change things in CSS. Well, like we are, we're adding functions to CSS. Why can't we change things beyond that is an argument that much more CSS focused people will have. And I will not be part of those arguments because I'm not qualified for them. But I will give my opinion as a language nerd about how weird it is swapping between the shit all the time. This is where it gets really cool though. See here we have light dark and on light, it will resolve to Alice blue, which is a variable we've defined somewhere. Actually, is that just a default CSS option? Is Alice blue one of the like hard coded color values? God damn it, it is. What the fuck is Alice blue? I, I hate the browser. Apparently Tailwind has a similar function too. This doesn't let you define custom functionality the same way though. This lets you access values from Tailwind config. It doesn't provide the same functionality where you're returning different values based on different conditions like this does, which is what makes it so cool. Where here, background color will be Alice blue in light mode and 333 in dark mode. The font weight will be 500 in light mode and 300 in dark mode. And the font color will be 333 in light, E4, E4 in dark. That's really cool. I guess I'll spin up the Chrome Canary. Enable that guy. Change between prefers light and dark. It just works. And the code is hilariously simple now. We have our function light dark. You pass it a light value or a dark value, and then you can just apply it everywhere. That's so good. The fact that this didn't exist before is kind of hilarious. Previously, what you would have had to do is define variables with different conditions for both light and dark values for everything. So you would have had like for each of these that has two different values, you would have had to define both. If you look at any like shad CN code base, here we have our layer base. This has for root, all of these different variables that we use, but then for dark, it redefines all of them separately. That's obnoxious. And if I want to use a value that isn't in here, I'm screwed. And the fact that we picked some colors that aren't in here for the colors for random things in the T3 chat UI is what makes switching over and adding a light mode so much harder than it otherwise would have been. This solves so much of that. And I really hope this standard becomes a thing. There's a ton of potential here. Yeah, the editor's draft for this is literally yesterday. Don't know when the video is coming out, but this is still super, super early. The big issue with custom properties is that they are fixed at the point they're defined. You can't change them without fully overriding them. Custom functions will allow the same power as custom properties, but parameterized. They have the same flexibility and conditionality as a custom property definition, but they take values from other custom properties or explicitly as arguments at the point of use. Oh, it has inherent too. That's really cool. So if shadow color is the variable we defined here, but there's already a custom property defined within that scope, it can inherit that. But if we pass it a new one, it'll use that instead. That's really cool, actually. Maybe cascading wasn't a mistake. Interesting. This is winning me over fast. I see a lot of potential for this. Uh, here's that negative example that was in the thing we just read. That's cool that we can define the variable of gap, pass it, or just call that there instead. That's so cool. Ooh, it has an optional return type too. Yeah, here you can specify that it returns a specific type. I was concerned about that bit. That's cool. Function a length, a color, a length plus. Yeah, but if it returns multiple things, then you need to do a type. That's really cool that there's an actual type function that will be included in this as well. Function parameters contain the same custom property name more than once, then the function rule is invalid. I hope that compilers are smart enough to call this all out. God, this is going to make life for all those fancy like Rust based compilers for CSS much harder. What's the one that Tailwind V4 just moved to? Lightning. Yeah, Lightning CSS. This is a super performant minifier for bundling and dealing with all of your CSS. Tailwind V4 is effectively a rewrite of the Tailwind compiler to take as much advantage of Lightning as possible. The life of people like the Lightning devs, as well as the ES build, CSS Nano, all these folks, they are going to have a lot of work to do in order to get things like this working properly. But if they pull it off, it's going to be nuts. Back to the actual functionality here. The result descriptor defines the result of evaluating the custom function defined by its at function rule. Using var functions, it can reference function parameters, local variables, as well as other custom functions. The result descriptor itself doesn't have a type, but its resolved value is type checked during the substitution of a dashed function. Interesting. 
So when we call the function somewhere, like up here, when we call padding dash dash negative, it checks the type of what this results in then, and if it's a wrong browser error, presumably. Custom function can access local variables and function parameters from functions higher up in the call stack. Cool, so outer has result inner. Inner is a function that has access to this outer local because it's called in outer. So the way you think of this is we have outer. Outer defines this outer local value. It then calls inner. Now when inner is called in that call stack, because we call this from div z index outer one, since we're calling it from here, one gets defined as outer arg. That calls inner. Inner has outer arg because we passed it here. Outer local comes from this here, goes there. And now we can add one plus two to three. This is a little chaotic. And my gut feel when I first saw this was, fuck no, why would anyone ever want this for any reason? But if you think of this kind of like the function keyword versus const variable function definitions in JavaScript, these functions are just being defined and exist. So outer exists. It takes in this argument. It also defines this variable and its return calls this other thing that may or may not exist, enter. We don't know yet. Who cares? Another function is defined, enter. This one explicitly returns a number. The result is the result of calculating this outer arg variable, which might not exist if we just look at this in isolation. Hell, outer local also might not exist. None of those are declared here. So we need to make sure whenever this is called that outer arg and outer local are both declared. Cool. So knowing that this doesn't specify what inputs it has, but we know that in its call stack, this stuff has to exist before we can safely call this function. Down here, we call outer. We call it with one. That gets assigned to this. We then, just thinking of this top to bottom, we're running the code. We define the outer arg as one. Cool. We then run outer local. We define that as two. Cool. We now have these two variables, outer arg and outer local. Then the result calls inner. Since we're in the same call stack, all of these values exist within the context of inner being called there. This is your brain on cascade. This is like dependency injection without the injection. I, I think this is a pretty good job of maintaining the spirit of CSS, allowing you to define things and then children just have them but it's weird as a JS dev. And you think of functions as much more a JavaScript thing than a CSS thing. This really feels like CSS functions in these ways. The idea of cascading variable definitions is fascinating. Yeah, and similarly here, if you have an element that has a variable or a custom property defined, that is accessible in this. So Z is set to three. We have this double Z function that takes no arguments, returns a number, expecting this to exist. So if you call double Z, it better be somewhere where Z exists, but that lets you define things in the element itself or in a class that's being applied without having to manually pass all of that over. This makes it much easier to manage your styles in multiple different places. It's going to make debugging your styles hell, but debugging your styles is already hell. That's why we like Tailwind so much. This is gonna make composability of your style significantly better. Imagine if in your CSS file, you can target an element like div, apply a property to it, and then all the other computed values inside of that element are now updated using that property. That's really, really cool. Somebody looked into the name of the different colors. Things like Rebecca makes sense because Eric Mayer's daughter passed away, but Alice Blue is a random reference to Alice Roosevelt Longworth, the daughter of President Theodore Roosevelt, who was known for her fashionable sense of style. Why the fuck is Alice Blue a thing? I'm going to keep dying on the hill, but that's a stupid one. Back to this though, because I'm actually digging what's going on here. Add ABC takes in B and C. C gets redefined here. So even if you pass something different here, this actually this is a really good example of showing how the hierarchy here works. So we first define A, B, and Z as one, two, and three. B and C are also arguments for this function. So we pass in 20 and 30. A is still one because we haven't redefined that anywhere. B is now 20, C is now 30. So we put those in here, B is 20, C is 30, A is still one. But then C gets overrated to 300 here. Effectively, again, we have to think in the call stack. We have to think in the cascade, the order of events, because that's how cascading style sheets work. 
The thing at the bottom of the cascade wins unless there's an important call above it. Literally like exclamation point important. So this is a really good example because it shows if it's not defined again, it can carry all the way from here with the div. That's what happens to A. B gets overridden here because we're passing a different value to the function. C gets overridden here because it's defined in the function right before giving the result. So there's no such thing as a constant. Everything's a variable, first and foremost, which is funny. But uh, yeah, I am not looking forward to the debug story here. Ooh, lists. This is actually really cool. Max plus X. You pass it a set of values, and then you add this additional value. And you can call max and other math functions that already exist in the browser like calc. Here, it's going to take whatever the value that we prefer is and then add three pixels to it. That's really cool, actually. This is going to solve so many of the weird, like setting a specific height to fit a page where the top nav still fits proper. So many of those bugs are going to be really easy to solve now. Oh, I like this a lot, actually. There's going to be a lot of cursed shit with this. And poor Firefox is going to be screwed for a while. But if we can ignore all those things, this is a really, really promising proposal. Interesting. They've even thought through cycles. Cycles are not allowed. There's no recursion. Your CSS is not allowed to be recursive. It's allowed to cascade, but you cannot make it recursive. Don't you dare even think about doing it. I'm paying attention. I'll notice if you do. Hopefully your browser will too, because even if a path doesn't exist, like at media unknown feature, this will never be hit. No browser supports unknown feature. This will still error out because of the possibility of a branch that calls it recursively. That is a good call. Well, it's a bad call, literally. You can't call this, but it's a good call to prevent calling this. There are so many good puns with all this. I'm doing my best, guys. Interesting. Okay. So here's a fun example where Baz is referencing a value from another call to Baz. So X gets defined here as Baz 1px. So that will be 11 pixels now. So now X is set to 11. Y is dash dash Baz 2px, which this will override that X value, get passed in. This is a terrible written example trying to show what this is supposed to do. But yeah, I would have named these differently to make it clear what this is doing. But yeah, the point here is you can call Baz to get a result and then call Baz again without issue and then reference it later on and it's fine. God, I hate this example so much. Half the examples in docs like this are to try and communicate how to use the feature. The other half are to give the people building these systems for Firefox, for Chrome, for Safari, for Ladybird, a spec sheet of edge cases they have to make sure they handle. So this example is the latter for sure, but it does help us get an idea of how they expect us to use this. Interesting. The declaration appearing later wins over earlier ones. So you can call result multiple times. Like imagine in JavaScript, we had a function. Let me type script function example. And this return five and then return six. When you call example, you get five because once a function returns, it's dead. We can make it a generator and then yield five and six, but that's about as close as you can get. But since CSS is a special snowflake, it keeps running the whole thing and whatever's at the end wins. No such thing as an early escape. I'm not saying one is right or wrong. I'm saying one's existed for 30 years and one of them is brand new. And this one trying to be too css -y, has strengths and weaknesses, all to be considered. Oh, they even call it early return here. Due to the execution model, early return is not possible within a function. So if we put with as a greater than a thousand as our media query, our if statement condition here, results 20, else results 16, it will always resolve to 16 because the, the winner needs to be at the bottom. Ever see a syntax and realize you're in too deep? This is where we tap. I feel like we've actually gotten quite a bit here. This is a super exciting proposal. I see a lot of benefits, but I also see a handful of foot guns we're gonna to need to be considerate of if we start adopting functions in our CSS. What do you think though? Is the future building our applications via CSS on the server, or is this an overrated feature that's not even gonna ship? I think reality is gonna be somewhere in between, but I'm curious how you feel. Until next time, peace nerds.